Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode. Now, last week I posted an episode which talked a little bit about my background and some of the things I've done over the years. I had some great comments and DMs and stuff saying, hey, we'd love to see more of this then. So over the next few weeks, I'm gonna run you through the series that I made for Sony, which takes you through a different topic every week. Now this week, I wanna break down how we made Lab OMs a few years ago with Bruce Logan ASC, who was famous for actually being the cinematographer who blew up the Death Star back in Star Wars 1977. Bruce and I worked together on this project to make a short drama for Sony in the UK and we shot it over uh, three days in a little uh, seaside town in England called South End and it followed three characters and their kind of sordid love affair. But what was challenging about this was we weren't able to use any dialogue because the project was supposed to be created for an international audience. So in this film, I want to show you how we broke down behind the scenes of making Lab OEMs. Hey again, just before I get into talking about the process of behind the scenes with Lab OEMs, I want to start by saying drama is not my first skill set. In fact, I've mostly filmed reality, documentary, corporate, more of a documenting style of production. But I had an opportunity to work on a drama and so I thought, why not? I think as filmmakers, it's really important to push yourself and do things that are out of your comfort zone. I first met Bruce Logan, ASC, whilst working on Revenge of the Great Camera Shootout, which was a camera test and subsequently being featured in the documentary Shadows and Light. And Bruce and I became great friends. And if you don't know who Bruce is, he is a cinematographer, American Society of Cinematographers endorsed. And as well as shooting 2001 A Space Odyssey, he filmed the explosion on the Death Star from Star Wars, the original movie. So we became great friends and an opportunity arose for me with uh, Sony in Europe to produce a film to showcase some of their cameras at the time. And so we decided to put together a short drama. So Bruce wrote a script and then I went about organizing locations. Now this entire process happened very, very quickly, probably in the space of six weeks from start to finish. And so I flew Bruce over from LA into London, picked him up from the airport and we immediately went out on location scouts. So I had an idea of the kind of locations that Bruce wanted to use. And one of those locations was Piccadilly Circus in the center of London. And I was like freaking out thinking, how are we going to get permission to film at Piccadilly Circus? In actual fact, it was one of the easiest places to film and get a permit for in any location I filmed anywhere around the world. So the first lesson here is ask. There are, it's amazing how many times people will say yes as opposed to no. Um, now you have to have things like the appropriate insurance in place and fill out the correct documentation. But the number of times I've had a yes over a no is, is amazing. So always ask permission. The second tip I wanna give you about filming a lower budget, fast turnaround drama is your locations can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. I think we paid about $100 to film at Piccadilly Circus, but it's Piccadilly Circus in London. It is an incredible backdrop. And so when you're on tight budgets, use the budget you have available to buy the best locations you can, because a great location will do a lot of the work for you in setting the scene. And a great location doesn't need a lot of set dressing. It doesn't need a lot of um, additional support to get it to look good. And so um, if you can find a great location, then that's really gonna help. There are usually amazing businesses in almost every city in the world that will help you find great locations for filmmaking. And those sites usually have a lot of different images of a location um, on, on their database. So you can do a lot of this from your computer. Now, we were filming in three distinct locations, Piccadilly Circus. We were filming in a small seaside town, 
and within that seaside town we had a, a main location in a hotel another location was internal in a restaurant and various locations around the streets of this particular area and we had a second location which was a beautiful interior location in the east end of london so we had three distinct locations over a three-day shoot i think we had a crew of about 10 or 12 on that production so the first things bruce and i did were to walk around all these locations and let him see them and figure out if they were going to work. Well, I wonder how often the trains come. Uh... The opportunity there was to identify where we could film and then build some kind of shooting schedule around that as well. So Bruce and I spent a bit of time looking at locations and figuring out where we could shoot certain scenes. The next stage was to actually cast the film and that was a fascinating process because I'd never been through a casting process before. We again spent some money on casting directors and had a number of actors come in and try out until Bruce found the three characters that he felt would work the best together. And that process was fascinating because that involved a lot of just trying different combinations of people out. Now after that process we set up the contracts and the agreements started booking crew, and then the shoot itself happened over a three-day period. Now, one of the challenges with filming outdoor exteriors is you don't have any control over the weather. And on the very first day of our shooting, it actually snowed, and that was not part of our plan. So we went to the hardware store, got brushes and salt, and brushed it off the streets so we could film this scene. Now, this was a really fascinating project because, as I said before, I hadn't shot drama before and Bruce is a Hollywood director. So I felt under enormous pressure to get it right. So I was very much the cinematographer on this production. We had a first assistant director who ran the, the script. And so what a first assistant director will do is take the script and the shooting schedule and make sure we stick to time because as creatives, it's very easy to spend longer than we need on a particular shot. Now, it was such a great experience working with Bruce and we had some incredible actors as well. Some who've gone on to be very well known and, um, and, and appear in major TV series. And it was so fascinating to watch a director get a great performance out of the actors. Now, what was interesting was this film was made for Sony Europe and it had to be understood by 14 different languages. And so what we did was we did the film with no dialogue. So the entire film was acted with zero dialogue. So we used great sound design, some great music, and the story was told by the actor's eyes and performances. So, you know, you don't need to go and have a complex script with lots of dialogue to tell a great story. We used a number of components in this film, time-lapse, um, multiple locations, interiors, exteriors, handheld, um, jib shots, tracking shots, albeit primitively using a wheelchair. We wanted to create some really um, emotive and engaging techniques. And it was an incredible experience. It's a film I'm very proud of. It's a film that I think it was a great experience to be able to um, have that opportunity to to work on a drama and learn the different pressures. So I think the lesson from all of this is, I want to encourage you to put yourself in situations that are, you're perhaps not comfortable with, but films that you're not used to doing and feel the pressure of what that is like because it, it's where the growth happens. When you have that sense of fear and trepidation, that sense of not being sure if you know exactly what you're doing, that to me is where the magic happens. and and it gives you such confidence because it always works. But you feel that sense of that you're learning something new and sometimes that can be confusing, but that is just a sign that you're learning something new. So I hope, I hope you found this useful and I'll make sure there's a link to the film um, below so you can have a look at the complete film.